Calculus at its core often boils down to the study of functions. Therefore, we need to first truly understand the nature of functions before we can begin working on more complicated topics in calculus. When you hear of a function, you probably imagine a mathematical expression like this, or perhaps like this, or this. Before we get too ahead of ourselves, let us look at a simple popular analogy that can help us understand what we are dealing with here. To help us grasp the concept of functions, we can think of each one as a machine, where there are certain inputs that can enter the machine and a subsequent output that is given by the machine. An input enters the machine, the machine transforms the input in some way, and the machine outputs the result of this operation. A key defining feature of this machine is that a single input can only return a single output. So we can only ever have one output for each individual input that we feed into the machine. We can have the same type of output for multiple inputs, but each input can only be associated with a single output result. Now, let us extend our analogy further by implementing it onto an actual function. We often plot our functions on a set of axes to help us visualize the nature of a function. The horizontal axis is referred to as the independent variable and is commonly indicated by the variable x. The vertical axis is known as the dependent variable and is commonly represented by the letter y. You have most likely seen a set of axes like this before whilst doing mathematics in high school. In this example, we will plot what we would have commonly called y is equal to x in our younger years of maths. Whilst the equation y is equal to x is not incorrect, in calculus we prefer the following notation, where we give the function a variable name, in this case f, in brackets we say which variable we are using as the independent variable, and as a reminder, that is the variable on the horizontal axis, followed by what the value of the function equals at each point on the horizontal axis. Essentially, f of x here replaces our variable y. So if we were to look at this function as a machine, we would see that it takes in an x value as an input, transforms the x value in some way, and returns the y value associated with that x value. In this example, our function simply returns the same output as its input. So it returns the same y value as our x value. We also saw in our machine analogy that our machine has a specific characteristic that it can only return one output for each input. So for our graphed line to be a function, it can only return one y value for each x value in our graph. To test this, we can use what is called the vertical line test, also known as the ruler test. If we can move the vertical line across the graph, with the vertical line only ever intersecting the graphed line once at each point, then we do indeed have a function that has been plotted on our graph. If, however, our graph had, for instance, the equation of a circle plotted on it, it quickly becomes clear that this equation is not a function, as our vertical line test intersects the lines of the circle more than once at points along the graph. Let's look at another example f of x is equal to x squared minus 5. Doing our vertical line test, we can once again determine that this equation does indeed represent a function. So, we now know what a function is. It's an equation that represents some sort of transformation where we can give it an input and an output associated with that input can be calculated. But why do we need functions anyway? What use do they have? Functions are incredibly powerful and useful tools in the real world and are necessary for more than just passing your next exam. For instance, what if we wanted to create a generalized way of figuring out the speed of a certain object? Functions can help us with that. Perhaps we can notice a certain interesting trend in a company's stock price. We can use a function to plot this and potentially make better financial decisions based off of this one equation. Want to be able to create a generalized plot of the motion of a ball? A function might be able to help us with that. There are plenty of other scenarios as well, such as projecting cost price, generalizing population growth, determining infection rate, 
and many more applications. Functions open a door to a whole new world of understanding, calculation, and visualization of the world around us. To truly love calculus, one first needs to fall in love with functions. That's all for me today. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in another video soon.